So welcome, welcome everyone. So glad that you are with A Word for the Journey. Even though we had planned on having a guest today, uh, situation circumstances didn't work out, but we promise that that guest is forthcoming. Today, we're going to be talking about God fights for us. God fights for us. And I love this passage because God is showing us some things that we're going to see that's going to be able to apply to our lives. And I pray that you will be encouraged by it. I pray that you will be blessed by it. And I just want to pray. So uh, if you don't mind with me, if you will uh, pray with me as I pray. God, thank you uh, for this day. God, a, a day that we've never seen before. Uh, thank you, Lord God, in spite of the heat that you have given us some sense of comfort, either through a fan or through air conditioning or through life, God. We know that there are people who are on the streets, God, who don't have that opportunity, that cooling centers, Father God, are, are overwhelmed, God, today uh, because of the heat. But we know, Lord God, that it also reminds us that your presence is here even despite what we've been doing to the planet, God, your presence is still here and that you love us and that you're going to take care of your children. And so with that, God, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. So as we go through this lesson today, God, we just pray, God, that you would get control, Father God, that you would uh, be glorified, that your name would be lifted up, uh, Father, that you would stand up and allow us to sit down so that we can hear what you're saying to us today, God. I thank you in advance for just your love and your faithfulness and all that you've done for us and all that you will continue to do. In Jesus' name, we love you, we bless you, we pray, amen. So thank you guys for coming on today. Those of you who are with us uh, via Zoom, those of you who are just streaming by, God, we're just so grateful to God for that. Today, we're going to talk about God fights for us. God fights for us. So I want to start by asking you a question. Have you ever been in a fight before? Maybe you grew up in a family. There's a lot of you all, or maybe there's a few of you, and you might have gotten involved in a fight, but then your relatives kind of stepped in, or maybe a friend stepped in to try to help you so that when you were in that fight, you didn't have to fight for it alone. But then some of us may have been only children or may have uh, not gone to the same schools or what have you as your siblings, and you had to fight for yourself. But one of the things that we know is that we're going through battles. How many of you are facing a challenge right now in your life. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be mental, it could be financial, it could be marital, it could be uh, just dealing with loneliness. It's whatever you're battling with, uh, from addictions to anything else, we know that we can't fight this fight by ourselves. But the Bible tells us that we have an advocate through the Holy Spirit that fights with us, that fights even against our mind. You remember that song that Bruce Parham recorded, I want to say back in the early 2000s, or it might have been the later 2000s. And he said that, hide me uh, against the enemy. And he goes on to talk about, you know, hide me, you know, when I go through these things. But then he says, Hide me even when the enemy is me. <laughs> so God will fight for us. He will fight for us even when it's us. He'll fight for us even when we're experiencing whatever that we're going through. Our God fights for us. And so we're going to find the passage that we're going to look at today in the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter. We're going to start at the 14th chapter and we're going to begin at the 8th verse. Very familiar, you're kind of more familiar with the ones that are before, but we're going to talk about this portion of Exodus for us. And this is trailing right after Moses and Aaron had been before the presence of Pharaoh. And finally, after the plagues, you all remember those plagues, right? 
uh, nasty things like locusts. It almost feels like for many of you who are living in Illinois right now that you're plagued by something else, right? <laughs> and those those little nasty things that are coming around and, and flying around and crunching and all that other stuff, you're feeling almost plague-like. But what I'm saying to you is that we had and watched these plagues happen that changed the heart of Pharaoh, right? And he finally reluctantly is going to let the people of Israel go after 400 years of bondage. What is it that they had in common with us, right? 400 years of bondage and we just celebrated Juneteenth. So I don't even think I need to go through that with you, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these verses beginning at verse 18 and we're gonna read all the way to 14. I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Version, but then my foundation scripture, I'm going to reread it uh, in the NIV. So it begins, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he chased after the sons of Israel, and the sons of Israel were going out boldly. So remember, they were leaving Israel, that they were leaving Egypt, and they were going boldly. They had taken borrowed, uh, they had borrowed jewelry that they were never going to have to return. They were borrowing animals for the sacrifice that they were going to never have to return. I mean, a whole lot of stuff was going on at the time, and they were on their way out boldly. It goes on and says in verse nine, it says, then the Egyptians chased after them with all of the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, they were over, overtook them camping by the sea. Besides uh, Farotharal and the front of Belzephon, as Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they became frightened. Now remember, God had opened up the sea. They were walking through, they were really comfortable. They were bold, the, the seas were on the sides and they were walking straight through on dry land. Yet when they see the Egyptians coming after them, the Bible says they were frightened. And I think I would be too, if I knew that I was escaping bondage. But as we go on, he says that in verse 11, then they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us to die in the wilderness? You hear that little smirky kind of stuff going on? They prefer to be slaves than to be dead in a grave under the water. And so they're saying, you know, to Moses, you must have really set us up so that we could be killed. But as we're seeing this and we're looking at this, why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Verse 12. Is it not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Now, do you actually remember them saying that? Because <laughs> remember, they were crying out to the Lord for over 400 years, Lord, uh, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. And yet they're coming up with these excuses. They go on to say that, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Verse 13 says, but Moses said to the people, do not fear, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord and he, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. The NIV reads in verses 13 and 14, it reads, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see 
the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So I'm going to ask you the question again, and you all can, uh, you can let me know either by an emoji or by a raise of hand. How many of you, I, and I'm going to raise my hand because I need this. How many of you need the Lord to fight for you? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I need him to fight for me too. And this is why we're in this passage today, because God does want to fight for us. And so as we lower our hands, we can really see in this passage that he is talking to the Israelites, but God is speaking to us today as well. Let's look at this. He says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. I want to stop right there. First of all, when something is chasing you in your life, whatever it is, it might be disease, it might be a situation, it might be a circumstance, it might be something that's happening with our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews. It can be something that is happening in our lives that only the help and the strength of the Lord can overcome it. There's a lot of things that we can do. Those of you who uh, you know, had a little fight in you when you all were younger, you might've been able to throw down <laughs> for a little bit. You might've been able to take somebody out for a moment there. But what we're seeing here is that we're seeing a situation that could not be taken down by just people. Because when you're walking on ground and there are horses that are coming through on ground, who do you think is going to win? Horses are much stronger, much faster than we are. And no matter how far or fast they would run, and they really couldn't run because remember, they were bringing all their things. This was not like something that they were just, you know, going for a jog. They were leaving permanently for good. So they had loved ones who were aged they had uh they had mules and they had camels and they had all these things that were coming along with them they had their belongings that they had in Egypt and so they're not just running and because there is horses coming after them they are vulnerable but look at what Moses says to them which God is speaking to you and I today about as well. He says to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm. And so the first thing that we wanna look at from this passage is gonna help us as believers today when we are battling something, whether or not it's inwardly or outwardly, whether or not we're dealing with things that are challenging in our lives is that we need to learn how to stand firm in faith. Again, the first thing that we learn from this passage of scripture is that we, when we're being chased, when there is a battle coming, when there is situations that are out of our control, we need to learn how to stand firm in faith. Now look at it, the Israelites. The Israelites are amazing people. They were uh, God's chosen people. They were of the seed of Abraham. We, as a result of that, we have been engrafted into the promise. And so as a result of that, we have some of the same things that they were dealing with. They were human. They had failings. They were scared. Has anybody ever been scared when you heard of a diagnosis or scared when your child went off and you were worried about what was going on or scared when your sibling was dealing with challenges? Have you ever been scared when the notice came about the mortgage and you had just lost your job? Have you ever been scared when there's been things that are going on and you just did not have a control to do? There were things that we sometimes deal with that are scary. And this is what's happening with them. The Israelites were terrified. 
and they faced the Red Seas with the Egyptian army closing in on them. They are walking in on open ground. They are beginning to do right now. They're on the open ground. They're not even in the sea yet. They're on the open ground with the Egyptians falling behind them. And then what we see a little bit later that happens in verses 15 and on that the Lord says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forth. And then he lifts up his staff and he stretches it out over the sea and it divides, right? Now, remember, there had already been almost a day ahead of them. And though they hear the horses, they're still a far way out. But the Israelites were terrified because they faced the sea now in front of them. Have you ever faced a sea in front of you that seemed almost impossible for you to be able to cross in your life? Where there's been things that you're like, how am I going to get through this? I can't swim the length of the Red Sea. I can't do these things, only God can do it. And so what Moses encourages them to do, even before he divides the sea, he tells them, stand firm, stand firm. Stand firm in your faith. Trust God, the same God that you've been calling on to ask him to deliver you. You know, the same God that we pray and ask God to deliver. We're praying, right? We're asking God, God, do this for us and do this for that. And God, will you do this? And, and God, will you have mercy? And God, will you will you heal this? Or, or will you change this? All these situations are popping up and yet, Moses is encouraging them, though they don't see the answer in front of them because all they see is the Red Sea. And you and I have been in Red Sea situations, right? Where it does not look like there's an answer. It does not look promising. It looks like death in the midst of everything that's going on. But Moses encourages them to stand firm in their faith and trust God for their deliverance. It's almost like when you look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 13th verse, when Paul writes to the epistles and he says, therefore, put on the full armor of God, that when the day of evil comes, that you might be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand. Because we have a God who is specializing in, in really major problems that we have. There are nothing to him. They're minute to him. They look big to us and overwhelming. But the scripture says that what was impossible for man is possible for God. God fights for us even in the midst of Red Sea situations. Remember, the Egyptians are closing in. They're on dry land. They are on dry land and they are facing the sea. And Moses says, stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. I wonder if sometimes when we are so discouraged, we get a little wobbly. We get a little wobbly and we don't know if God is going to come through. And he is always consistently coming through in every situation and circumstance. And God still is a deliverer today. And I want to encourage you as you look at these passages of scripture of seeing what they were facing. They were facing death. They were facing destruction. They thought that this Red Sea in front of them, it was nothing but allowing us to die in this wilderness. And yet Moses says, I'd want you to stand firm in your faith. Deuteronomy 1 and 30 will remind us that the Lord your God is going before you and will fight for you as he did in Egypt. That's what Moses was able to draw on from this situation. 
because if he fought for you once, he's going to fight for you again. If he did it before, he'll do it again. If he saved you from a situation before, God is able to save you from a situation again. If God healed you before, he's able to heal you again. If he was able to come through financially before, he's able to do it again. If he was able to console you in your grief before, he's able to do it again. If he was able to do exceedingly abundantly what you asked or thought about, he can do it again. So I want you to know that God fights for us, but we have to not be afraid and stand firm in our faith. The next thing that we see here is that he says, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord bring you today. I, I love this particular promise is because he says to them very confidentially, remember this is Moses who was really afraid to even speak. He, he was like, God, uh, please don't use me because I, I stutter and, and I'm not able to do this. And yet he talks to Pharaoh, even through his brother, Aaron, and he does the miracles that God has given him to do. And yet Pharaoh lets them go. And even though he gets heart and heart again, God is only showing his people that even when people's hearts turn hard against you, that God is still a deliverer and God is still purpose to deliver his people. So look at this. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm in your faith, right? You will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will bring you today. And so the next thing we have to understand is God's deliverance for our life is certain. God's deliverance for our life is a certainty, guys. It is certain that God will deliver us. God fights for us because he is able to find the exit for us. Even when we are tempted above what we're able, the scripture says that he gives us a way for escape. So if he does that in our sin life, if he does that when we've seen him do it before, he'll do it again. I remember uh, many years ago uh, coming home to my home uh, from school, from college. And I was walking down the bus stop and, and, and just got off and then I got off the L and then I'm now walking in my neighborhood and, and, and all of a sudden there was a guy and another guy who decides that they're going to rob me. And they robbed me, they're robbing me at gunpoint. Now, stupid, I know it's stupid now. I know it's stupid now. I had just bought a book <laughs> from college and I had just paid that money. And so when they asked me for my book bag and my purse, I gave them my purse willingly, but I didn't want to give them my book bag because I had just bought this book. It was very expensive. And you know, as a college student, you don't have a whole lot of money, right? To spare. But what happened was that even though the gun was there. My stupidity <laughs> wanted to fight for my book bag, right? Because of the book that was in it. It was dumb. It was stupid. I would not recommend it to a buddy or a friend or even an enemy to ever do. What happened is that because God was fighting for me because I was too stupid <laughs> to just give them the bag, God fought for me by allowing me to keep my book with my book bag, had them take everything else out that they wanted because I my logic was, you're not going to read this book. There's nothing you can do with this book. And once it left the bookstore, it's not going to be of any value to you, et cetera. And God fought for me. That's the dumb way to put God to the test. I'm just telling you. So don't do it. 
But this is what I'm hearing from the Lord is telling us today, regardless of the situation, regardless of the danger, regardless of the problem, God is able to fight for us, even in those situations that we make dumb decisions on our own, because that was dumb. It was so dumb. And even in our dumbness, even in our situations that we've done, God is still able to deliver. And even as these people are yanging and yinging at, at Moses saying, you led us out here to die. We told you we didn't want to leave Egypt. We wanted to serve the Egyptians. Well, no, that wasn't what you said, because that's why God sent a deliverer is because you cried out to him year after year that you wanted this deliverance. But listen. Listen, this is what's happening here. The Israelites were so terrified when they faced that Red Sea, just like you and I, when we're going through situations, they faced that Red Sea with the Egyptian armies closing in on them. But God's promise to fight for his people, God's promise to fight for his people is certain because God's promise to fight for his people assures us that he will deliver us from our troubles. Have you ever been delivered from a trouble? Have you ever seen God move in your life in the past? Have you ever seen God do a work so powerful in your life that you knew that it had nothing to do with you? You knew that you couldn't explain it. You knew you couldn't touch it. Other people had gone through stuff and they weren't delivered, but yet you were delivered each and every time. This is God showing us and demonstrating that when we stand firm in faith, his deliverance is certain and God promised to fight for his people. He always assures us that he will deliver us from our troubles. And what does it say? That the victory over the Egyptians is going to be a testament of God's power and faithfulness. What does it say in Isaiah 43 and two? And I love this passage of scripture. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not over sweep you. When you go through the fire, you won't be burned, right? Because this is what God does over and over in our lives. We have to begin to trust him. We have to have faith to know that he's going to do what we can't do on our own. And I'm so grateful to God that his deliverance is certain. And sometimes we think that God is not always delivering because sometimes he'll take loved ones from us. And we're like, well, God, why didn't you deliver them? It wasn't that he didn't deliver them. He did deliver those even from long-term sickness and death. I thank God that he is still a deliverer of our lives. And what does it continue to say? The Egyptians, he says, will, you will see today, <laughs> you will never see them again. <laughs> I love that. In other words, there's sometimes there are going to be enemies in your life that you're going to see. And they're going to come after you. They're going to come after your reputation. They're going to come after you with words. They're going to come after you with deeds. Sometimes they're going to come after you physically. And yet he says that the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. God can fix it that you don't even have to ever come across that again with those individuals who had it out for you. And the poor Egyptian soldiers, they were just following orders, but they were never seen again because if you continue to read down as the sea is divided, we know that the staff comes up and we know that it says in verse 17, for, for as for me, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after this river that has been opened up, this sea that's been opened up. He's going to make them still say, hey, well, if they're walking through, we're going to go through too. And that's the hardening of hearts because logic is going to say to them, hey, that's water. <laughs> and we're in chariots and we got horses and we can come right back on this ground. 
but God hardened the hearts of those Egyptians who were chasing them so that they stayed in there. So we know that the scripture tells us as we look through the rest of chapter 14, that eventually after the last person who was of Israel, who had been delivered from the Egyptian, uh, who had caused them to be enslaved for over 400 years, as the last people come up off the ground and the Egyptians who are following behind them, then the sea begins to close. Because that's what God will do. That even when you feel like they're still chasing after us, they're still coming after us. This situation is still, I'm still dealing with it. It's happening. It's coming after me every single time. He's going to bring deliverance to us. Not only deliverance is certain, but also we have to know from this scripture, he says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. That's a hunk of words for these Israelites to see as they have faced the Red Sea, as there are chariots of horses behind them, for them to be still. Now, we know physically they're not still. And that's what the part of the effort that comes from us. We still have to walk through some stuff. Sometimes we have to walk through some stuff still, despite what our lives says. We have to walk through. The Israelites had to walk through the sea in order for them to get to the other side. And so it wasn't that he was saying that it was a physical be still, but it was a stillness and a trust in God. So be still and trust. That's the number three point. Be still and trust because God wants to move in our times of trouble if we learn to be still in our hearts and trust God's plan. But our anxiety and our own fears, they come up and they fight against the word of God. They fight against our trust in him. They fight against our experience with him. They fight against those things that we see in the natural. But our anxiety and our fear will be calmed by knowing that God is in control. You all remember the youth choir that used to sing, God is in control. God is in control. Why? Because God is in control and he's fighting on our behalf. So we have to understand that the psalmist wrote in Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And I'm sure that the psalmist was able to, from oral tradition, was able to hear from their grandfather and great-grandfather and great-great-great-great-great-great-great, uh, all of those who had survived through those situations. They had walked through the sea and they poured that out to those who survived on the other side. Remember, remember God allowed those people to stay in there 20 years until they died off and then they were able to go to the promised land. But you and I can know through our tradition, just through our lives themselves, that there have been times in which we did not know if God would come through and yet he came through every time. Does that mean that when we prayed and we asked God to not take a person that we wanted to have in our lives, that didn't mean that he was not in control. God is still in control. What we have to do is be still and know that God has a plan. He has a plan for us. He has a plan for other believers. He has a plan even for those who not believed in him. He still offers that same plan to them. 
So when we think about this, when we are standing in challenging situations, we have to be still and know that God is God. And what does Moses say to him? They say that the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. How many of us need to be still? How many of us need to stop putting our hands in the middle of God's hand and try to move it the way that we want him to move it? How many of us need to be still to trust that God did it in the past and he's going to do it again? How many of us need to know that God is the same God today, yesterday, and forever? And his consistency is that he always takes care of of his own. He's not an absentee father in our lives. He is not someone who can disappoint us in the ways that we think that we are disappointed. Yeah, sometimes we don't get what we want. Sometimes that marriage does end. Sometimes sickness does come. Sometimes a bill that we can't afford does come, but yet God still is a deliverer. He is still the one who fights for us when we don't have enough energy to even fight on our own. Now, remember, the Egyptians still had to walk through the sea. They still had to go before and walk through the sea with the sound of the chariots behind them. And yet they had the confidence to know that if God opened up the sea in front of them, that God was going to take care of them. And I want you to know that there might be a sea that you are about to cross, or there's a sea in front of you that does not seem like there is an escape, but God will go before us because God will fight for us. He'll fight for your mind. He'll fight for your soul. He'll fight for your spirit. He'll fight on behalf of your family. He'll fight on behalf of you as you go before courts. He'll fight for you as you deal with all kinds of challenges medically. He'll fight for you when you are lonely. He'll fight for you when you're dealing with addiction. He'll fight for you because God will fight for us if we just stay still. Moses said in verses 13 and 14, do not be afraid, stand firm, for you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring today. The Egyptians you see today will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And in verse 24 of this passage of scripture, the Egyptians took up the pursuit on Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen in after the mist of the sea. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud that brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. It goes on and says that he caused their chariot wheels to swerve. They got confused even in the midst of an open sea and their wheels begin to swerve. What else does it say? It says that he made them drive with difficulty. These are trained horsemen. These are not amateurs coming after God's people. These were professionals. There is no reason for them to swerve. There's no reason for them to drive with difficulty. Because remember, it's dry land underneath there. And it goes on and says that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea because the Lord told him, stretch your hand over the sea and the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over the chariots and over the horsemen. And as he does that in verse 27, it says the sea returned to its normal state in the daybreak. 
while the Egyptians were fleeing right into it, the Lord overdrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army were gone into the sea after them and not even one of them remained. Remember, Moses told them, the Egyptians you will see today, you won't see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. No matter what the enemy has set up for you, it doesn't matter. Because if you and I learn how to be still, if we learn how to trust God fully, if we learn how to say, standing firm in our faith, knowing God, you did this before, you'll do it again, knowing that God's deliverance is certain, knowing that when we be still and trust, God will get rid of the enemy. I don't know how he's going to do it for you. I don't even know how he's always going to do it for me. But the confidence that we have is that God will do it because God fights for us. And that's good news. Let's pray. Father, thank you that in times of our fears, in, in times of situations that seem unimaginable, uh, in times of things that seem like it's going to overwhelm us, it's going to overtake us, God, you uh, remind us, God, that um, that we can stand firm in our faith in you to realize that you will deliver us and that, that we can be still and trust you. And so, God, help us uh, and forgive us in those times in which we thought that the enemy was going to come after us or this situation was going to come after us or this difficulty or sometimes even directly someone chasing us down with fear and anxiety and, and, and all those things that, 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 that overwhelm us, God, that, that bill that came, that seems unimaginable, that, that, that situation that came, Lord God, that seems unimaginable, the diagnosis that came, that seems unimaginable, the, 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 the situation of grief and sorrow and loss that, that came, that seemed unimaginable, you, God, Allow us to be still and know that you're God because you do fight for us. So thank you for that reminder today. And we pray, God, that you would help us, God, to always trust you, even in the big C moments, God, of our lives. And know, God, that you're coming in, making a way for us for escape. And then, God, that you're going to close it after we are safe. And, God, that you will chase down the enemy yourself because we don't have to fight him. We all just need our weaponry on. And you promised that you would fight. You never told us to that we had to put on our armor and fight. <laughs> you just told us to put on our whole armor that we might be able to stand. And so God, remind us of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us at um, A Word for the Journey. I pray that um, that God has just blessed you with this time. Uh, we pray that God will open up the door for our guest speaker uh, to next week and that you've bared with me this week. Uh, we know, Lord, that the, we know that the Lord is 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 awesome and his word is so fresh and powerful. And so I pray that you would be blessed today. Uh, we're about to go into our discussion, as is our custom. We're going to have a great time of talking about this a little bit further. This is a time in which we grow even further. So we'll see you on next week if the Lord says the same. God bless you and have an amazing day.